again, it's a combination of things. The issuance side is a very valid point, but we mustn't forget that, you know, with, whether it's the Bank of England or the Federal Reserve or the ECB, the central banks are net purchases of almost a third of any issuance that's come out. So we have got a very substantial uh, buyer of last resort that could actually continue to ramp up very significantly to, to absorb any of that supply pressure. Now, I think what we're really getting here is clearly some anxiety about inflation. But I think where the market is possibly jumping at shadows is this is a, an inflation that's been driven by uh, rising costs uh, born out of supply chain disruption. And in many ways, this is a replay of what we saw in 2011. And the interesting thing about that was after the run-up of inflation in 2011 on the back of higher commodities, you then actually saw bond, bond yields uh, fall quite sharply. So if this is just about a, a sort of short-term hit of rising cost pressures that ultimately erode real disposable income, the bond market might well rally quite strongly into that once that reality uh, comes into play. How firm a footing do you think we are here in the UK for a meaningful recovery in, in the small and mid cap space, i.e. a return to solid growth for the UK in spite of the Chancellor's announced stealth taxes, which will increasingly uh, take more of uh, the consumer's household income as the years pass? Yeah, uh, I mean, this is the $64 billion question. We've got a tug of war. We're well aware about the pressures on the labour market that have still got to work their way through. But on the plus side, we've seen a massive ramping up of uh, the savings ratio and Andrew Haldane the Bank of England talking about it being a coiled spring. So we're yet to see whether this really is going to be a coiled spring or whether we're ex going to experience some paradox of thrift. But my, my suspicion is that we economists in general could well still be underestimating the sense of uh, uh, rebound we're going to see. And clearly, the small and medium enterprises that can participate in that are going to be uh, very well positioned because we, we've gone through now a Darwinian process in terms of survival of the fittest. So the ones that are in a position uh, to, to recover from that will be, uh, you know, I, I think looking in quite a good sweet spot uh, in six to nine months time. Philip, can I ask you about the big news this morning that Deliveroo has picked London for its listing? I mean, this is a company that could have a fairly big market uh, cap above or valuation above seven billion. Do you think it's on course for the FTSE 100 at some point? And would you welcome that, given that a lot of investors have been lamenting the lack of consumer tech businesses? Yeah, uh, yeah. And clearly, in aggregate, the UK has been handicapped by not having a big enough tech sector. So, very good news to hear the De Deliveroo announcement. And I think, again, it, it's testament to uh, the attractiveness of, of the, the, the London market, uh, the liquidity we can provide. And of course, we await to see uh, what happens in terms of Lord Hill's uh, suggestions uh, in his paper yesterday, what, which of those get implemented. But I think this is all about uh, London's competitive stance and a very good testament to that. And of course, that would very much, if we could enhance our technology exposure, uh, and that gets factored into our indices. I think that makes London and the FTSE, uh, uh, again, a, a quite an attractive market uh, in terms of a global context.